Hey, good day everybody, how you doing? We've got Lila Sasha over here coming to you for a weekend shave. It's actually a Friday today, it's October 11th. I took today off as a day off. It is Thanksgiving long weekend up here in Canada, so I also have Monday off, which is awesome. Don't go back to work till Tuesday. I want to spend some time with family and friends, smoking some turkeys, putting on some pounds, <laughs> just enjoying the good times. Hope it's warm where you guys are too. It's really kind of, it's got negative numbers here. You know, it's been chilly or single digit uh, warm side. It hasn't been the nicest weather, but it hasn't been the worst. So it could be a lot worse. There's guys south of me that have snow. Guys east of me have snow. Guys west of me have snow. So fingers crossed it holds off for a little bit longer. So today I came to guys to have a straight talk. <laughs> and what I mean about a straight talk do a little chat on straight razors nothing too too in depth um, I, I'm by no means an expert on these I'm still considering myself um, a novice I'm learning I'm enjoying them but recently I've had a few friends get into them and I just lent one of my straights with my beginner strop to a friend of mine should be receiving it today in the mail so I've been asked a few questions and I told me, you know what, I'll do a little bit of a video for them. So this might be a longer video, guys, I do apologize. Uh, the gear for today, as you saw there, was one of my, fa my favorite straight razors. Uh, this is my Wade and Butcher 7 8 full hollow, it's got the barber's notch, um, it's a celebrated fourth software today. My riders are playing tonight as well. So we're going to use the Urbane Shave Coat made by Purely Skinfell Handmade Essentials, 13th Man, which references the Saskatchewan Rough Riders fans. Uh, scents are watermelon, lime, and vanilla. Not really an appropriate scent for the temperature today. It's definitely a cool fall day, but my boys are playing. Of course, I'll be using my Thirsty Lather Bowl. There, I got a massive amount of it uh, spread out in there. Probably way too much soap. And I've had soaking my Coyote Cuts, Mad Hatter and Lime. And it's a, I think this was 26 millimeter Luxury Manchurian. Super soft, feels great. Beautiful brush, quite love it. Richard's taking a bit of time off. I think he just released another brush. But uh, hopefully he can get back to it when his life settles down. He does amazing work. So before you use this straight, I'm assuming from here on you already have your straight razor, okay? You know, I don't know if you have a 5 8 6 8 round point, pointed, whatever you have to start with. Um... That's a whole different debate in video. Most guys will stay 5 8 round point. Uh, what I mean by round point is right here. Toe and heel. Um, razor. This is a 7 8 I don't use the 5 8 too much anymore. I prefer something a little bigger. But you have to strop. So I have my good strop hanging up here. I don't usually leave this in the bathroom. But for this video, I brought it in here. So I'm going to pause this. I'm going to move it down to a mount lower where you guys can see the strop. Talk a little bit about it. I'll do some stropping. You may see my belly. Sorry. And I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. <laughs> Sorry, I had a phone call that came in too. So here's my strop. This one was a custom made one by a gentleman on the cane wet shavers. I uh, made it for a friend of mine, and then my friend uh, reduced his collection, so sold it to me. You have your leather side on your strop, you flip it over, and you have your canvas side. All right? And you're inside of your canvas, too. So on this side, where you usually put your chromium oxide, you use that for refreshes when your blade's getting really dull. We're not really going to go there today. This is the basics. Some guys will start you know, like 20, 10 to 25 laps on here. And then move over to the leather side. I really only go to the canvas side 
when I feel I'm not getting the edge I want by on here. So we're just gonna let that go down. Um, this is up a little high right now, but that's okay. Like I said, I don't usually strop in the bathroom. Um, you want it somewhere typically hung around waist height, so it should be another couple inches down for me. You're gonna pull it out. I always run my hands over to get the oil on your hands onto the strop to condition it, help keep it in good shape. Also to warm it up, I create a bit of friction. friction. All right, now you want to hold it tight, but not like rigid. A little bit of play is okay. When you're using the straight razor, you always want to lead with the spine and you rotate on the spine. You never lead with the edge. Leading with the edge is for honing. We're talking stropping. We're leading with the spine. You kind of hold it between your two fingers. And as you go to the end, you rotate and you bring it back. And that's one lap up and back is one lap. Most guys will say 30 to 50 laps on the leather. I'm a maniac. Um, like I said, I like to do mainly my work on the leather here. So I do probably 75. I'm just going to start. I like to start up right here. I did nick it here, actually, as you can see. Kind of really made me mad. Um, I was just dropping a razor I sold to somebody and I, fart, I, I made a mistake. So you lay it down. It's up. Rotate. Back. Rotate. Here it's sing. Speed is not the most important thing. It's very light pressure. Almost no, almost just the weight of the razor. And listen for that consistent noise. I'm gonna move it to the side, can see a little bit more. Oops. Shit. And I wasn't paying attention there, and I just nicked my strop really bad. Try to look at the camera, not watch what I was doing. Can you see that? I haven't even counted how many I've done yet. I don't go super fast. I mean, I see guys that just fly on this. Now, the big thing is here is never again. Don't, when you're, when you're stropping on it, don't leave with the edge. Stay to the spine, rotate on the spine. Never take the razor off the strop. I've never cut this until I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> also, don't get too close to the ends. You don't want to hit your edge on this point or up here, you'll really damage your edge. So, that's just my little bit about stropping. So I'm not, a, I'm not an expert, but I'm still learning, but I just wanted to share that with the guys who asked. I'm gonna finish my shop stropping, scream at myself for nicking that, and I'll be right back for the shave. All right, I'm back. Was a little crying there, a little yelling at myself for nicking that strop or slicing that strop. I know better. <clears throat> so I did all my laps. Again, lap is one up, one down. Always rotating on the spine, keeping it on the leather. What I did forget to mention there, I just realized is that's a three inch wide strop. You know, you can take the whole blade. Most blades are three inches wide. There are smaller strops, you know, two and a half inches. I think even down to two, which you have to do what they call the XY pattern. I haven't tried that yet. Um, like I said, I'm still relatively new. I've only been using straights for about a year. And I don't want to complicate it. A three inch strop is great. It's the whole length of the blade. I don't want to figure that out. I guess, you know, a smaller one might work for travel, um, for using something that's more vintage. For me, it just wasn't worth the hassle to learn. If it's your thing, great. But if you're starting off, for sure, I definitely recommend to just stand with a three inch strop. So I got this all ready to go here. 
This is, like I said, the uh, Urbane Shave Coal. Um, 13th Man, made by Purely Skimful. It's a beef tallow base. Um, my whiskers are really dry. <laughs> it's been a long time since I got out of the shower. <laughs> my kid's home today. She's injured. So I've been helping her out. Uh, just being dad, right? I'm trying to do this in between stuff. And then work customers always do call, even on days off. So sometimes you have to take a call. Sorry about that. I do not disturb on, but my set so my wife can call through in case of emergencies. Just need to know what's going on with my daughter that's injured, if she's going to try to go to school today or not. I don't think she is, unfortunately. So I have to call her in this absent. Uh, she's my daughter with all the medical issues right now. And they're out in the school yard yesterday winding up. The teacher lines them up to come back in at the class at the end of recess. They're seven, whatever. Um, there's some bigger kids playing around her. And they said excuse me to her, but she can't walk that fast right now. Crutches, canes, that kind of stuff. And I guess they thought she could move faster than she could. And they bowled over her. And knocked her into a bike rack, her knees first, and her knees are where her main, main, main problems are. So she's uh, in a lot of pain. So I hate seeing her miss all this school. I have some major appointments coming up for hopefully we can get things figured out for her. So more than enough soap. Like I said, I know I overloaded this. I want to make sure I work this real well just because of the uh, how long it's been since I did shower and hydrate my whiskers. But I think we're good. Very good soap, does the job, may not be as slick as others, but it's got more than, that, more than enough slickness to do the job. If you like your scents, from Purely Skinful. But you want more slickness than what her, um, beef tallow base provides which is more than adequate like I said I have zero issues with it um, her deer tallow is a step up and her bear tallow is really good so but again I've had no issues ever shaking with any of her bases uh, except for the first time I used it I just you didn't get the water issue right off first, offhand. I've went back, look at a couple of my videos also, and I noticed I talk really fast. I've known that my whole life. Um, I'm trying to consciously, consciously slow down. Excuse me. It'll take time, because I know there's things I can see that I'm saying in my head, but they're not coming out of my mouth. I'm skipping words. So I do apologize for that, guys. Okay, back to the straight. Shoulder, tang, tail, monkey tail, whatever you want to call it. Face, edge, heel, toe, point, scales, pivot pin. Basically says what the components of these are. I'll put a picture of that up too. There's lots of them on, uh, online you can see. Kind of rule of thumb, when you put this against your face, you want... A spine width off your skin. You know, the spine to show about the same width away from your skin. Um, if you're starting up, I definitely recommend skin stretching. 
I do that uh, most times anyways, but some people don't, and sometimes I don't. Very light pressure, guys. And you can do long strokes, you can do short little strokes, or whatever works for you. that simple you just take your time especially if you're learning don't rush it think back to your first DE shaves SE shaves all that kind of fun stuff you took your time you didn't rush it this is learning a new skill Learning new muscle memory. So just plan for more time. Will you get nicks? Probably. It happens. Um, You're in, I still do. You watch lots more of the season guys who straight shave on YouTube. Bruds, Dr. Matt. Once in a blue moon, they still get it too. Maybe not Dr. Matt. <laughs> I don't know if I've seen him do it for a long time. If you notice, I use a combination of longer strokes and longer strokes and shorter strokes. That's what works for me. Now. My grain goes this way there again. So I have to turn it upside down, my thumb underneath, two fingers up there, and that's how I do it. Remember to stretch. I like putting my fingers down here and pulling. I also pull my neck all the way up. Make it as tight as I can. I'm gonna leave that, we'll get that in a minute. So, most times when guys are starting out with straight razors, they're going to hear it said, just do your cheeks, just do your cheeks, start there. If that's where you wanna start, great, great, go for it. If you wanna do a complete with the green pass, your neck, um, if you don't have a goatee up through here or anything, go for it. I don't know if I would go across the green or against the green for your first shave uh, with a straight. Um, this moron did. Worked out okay for me. I had a couple of weepers in that, but it's probably not the best advice. You know, if someone was to ask me right now, I would say don't. You know, make sure you have a good experience your first time out so you want to keep coming back and doing it. Okay, I am going to go straight to against the grain here, guys. The soap's doing great. It's late morning here already, so I'm going to skip. We crossed the grain today. Um,
I never do across the grain on my neck with a straight. Just my cheeks. And chin and nose in that area. I guess my face area, hey? <laughs> so, this will be a longer video, like I said. So, if you guys have stuck it out so far, awesome. I know it's maybe not the best instructional, uh, instructional video, or structural. I can't speak, I'm sorry. But, in, instructional video. Um, but it's just kind of my take on it at this stage in my wet shaving experience for straights. And my advice I give to guys who've been asking me. So I'm going to go against the grain. Again, stretch. Careful of the ears, guys. I've definitely nicked my ears a few times. I just gotta dry my hand off here a little bit more. It's a little wet. I don't like that. I like a little bit of grip. The other thing you might have issues with is changing your hands and that kind of stuff. It takes time, it takes practice. Again, take your time. All right, you will hear me here rinsing my straight razor. I'm only rinsing the blade. Some guys don't even like seeing that done. They're always worried about uh, getting water in the scales and that kind of stuff and rust. Um, I'll talk about that in a bit here. That's close. Nice, like that. So again, now we're gonna do against the grain on the cheeks. I want to stretch, puff out my cheek as well. Make sure I don't take that into my hand. <laughs> and then I like to come down here, pull this way. Again, puffing out my cheek. And it says repeat on this side, right? <coughs> Excuse me. Again, the whole time there, I'm trying to do minimum pressure going against the grain. Try and keep this blade, sometimes it's closer, sometimes it's farther out. But on average, spine width off my skin. Okay. 
Always stretching. Wasn't too bad. Obviously, they call this the fool's pass. Very slow, very careful. You don't want to cut your nose if you're doing it against the grain there. If you're just starting out, I don't recommend it. Um, I do it one-handed right now. Um, Dr. Matt has a nice technique where he does two-hand. I think that's a good way to use control, or keep control, I should say. I want to clear up my snaws here, one sec. Perfect. So let's just do a uh, feel around here, see how this feels. There's a little clean up here against the grain that I skipped, or sorry, across the grain. I can feel that. Pretty good otherwise. Um, I might just take a swipe right there. To my own detriment, I hate the feel of hairs right there, even if it's just a small, small stubble. It drives me nuts, I'll pluck at them all day. So usually, I'll try to get rid of them, and it usually means a weeper. I never learn. <laughs> I'm okay with that. Okay, I'm calling that. I think that's pretty smooth. I'm feeling pretty good. That's DFS right now. I could chase BBS, but I don't want to. I'm going to shave tomorrow too. Yeah, I'm happy. So just let me clean up, and I'll be right back, guys. All right, I'm back. Nice warm water rinse, cool water rinse. No weepers. Feels really nice, guys. I quite love it. I started my cleanup, which I always do, um, but I want to show you this. So yeah, there's water on there. I'll put water on it now. It's damp. When I clean my razors, edge away from you. I just take my towel and run it over. 
bend it down, pinch it through my fingers, do the outside of the scales too. And if you can see the water drops that are in there, I also take, and I forgot to grab it, one sec. Some good old fashioned toilet paper. Top of that, I run it over the blade to make sure any moisture that was on the towel or that I missed doesn't stay on it. Over top of the scales, that one goes to the garbage. I take the next one. There's two here, it's gonna be a little thick, but that's okay. I just fold them up, pinch them down, put them between the scales. All right, and then I pinch my fingers together like this. I run them down the side. Tries everything off in there, back and forth a few times. Same with the other side, back and forth a few times. And then I will just get right up in here in the front. She's done. I leave it open to dry. People say, well, what about the pins? Dude, these things are made to get for wet shaving. It'll be fine. They will be fine in my opinion. So I'm just gonna put it down here so it doesn't get wet now that I've dried it off into my drawer. Or I take it upstairs and run over to the post. So it says really good, skin feels nice. We're gonna do two steps here today. Actually, I'm gonna throw Barbado back in. Just wanna see for any feedback. A bit of sting maybe is always nice, hey? <laughs> yeah. Just the standard alcohol sting, nothing. That was a great shave. Great, great shave. So we're gonna use the Urbane Shave Co. made by Purely Skinful, matching balm for the 13th man. Give it a good shake. There we go. Doesn't take much of this. Probably all I'm gonna use. Again, watermelon, lime, and vanilla. Not really a fall scent here, but the boys are playing. That feels great. Feels really nice. Quite enjoyed that shave. I know it's a super long video. Um, sorry. Hope this helps the people who asked. I hope they get to watch it. I'll go cry over some coffee or some tea. Now I can't drink coffee over the nick of my strop. Uh, quick review. 13th Man Urbane Shave Co. Made by Purely Skinful set. Barbado Splash. There's a badger lather bowl. Coyote cuts. Mad Hatter and Lime with a 26 millimeter um, luxury Manchurian knot. And I put it away, so I'll pull it back out. Keep it dry, but the Wade and Butcher, seven eighths, full hollow celebrated. Beautiful straight razor. Um, Oh, the one thing I do want to mention, and I'm sorry, guys, I should have put this earlier. I totally forgot. Edges. When you get a straight, it's probably not shave ready. I don't care what the factor says. Unless you get it from a Honemeister who has honed it for you, got a nice edge on it, it's probably not ready. So when you first buy one, unless it's coming from them, so usually they'll include that in their pricing. If you buy them from somewhere else, you know, put in, in your budget another 30, 40, 50 bucks probably, plus shipping to get them to do that for you. But don't shave without getting that done. Uh, and then there's different edges, synthetic edges, natural edges. That's a whole different topic, whole different topic. And that's for guys way, 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 way more educated than me. Um, all I'll say is you might find that you have to do a few different types of hones on different stones to find the edges you like. It took me about four or five. So thanks for watching everybody. I know this is a very long video, a little disorganized. Uh, it was a little more hectic today than I was planning. I was planning to be home, not have to deal with all these interruptions. But thank you for watching. If you're a subscriber, I do appreciate it. If you'd like to become one, please subscribe below. Questions, comments, good, bad, negative, 
Leave them below, guys. I do enjoy them. Um, it's shaving. It's love, love talking to you guys. So happy shaving, everybody. Enjoy your long weekend if you're up here in Canada. Have a great time with friends and family. I'll see you all again soon.